Yeah, so my name is Nick Skitland. I work at NASA in the United States, and I work in our Office of Human Capital Management in our Talent Strategy and Engagement Division. And we're really focused on strategy and innovation and the future of work um, to help NASA position itself to prepare for the next 60 years. So the number one way to spearhead the digital transformation change within NASA and, and really anywhere is to encourage HR professionals to upskill to digital skills. Um, it's really hard to be a digital organization if you don't have the talent um, behind that. And uh, at NASA, we attract some of the top talent in the world, including our HR professionals. They're just really good at what they do. And so most of them are curious and excited about learning new things. And so we just encourage them to learn digital skills. So the skills to overcome digital disruption is number one, curiosity. You need, you need to be curious about the future. If we all um, get scared and fearful about change, that, isn't, that is, doesn't benefit anybody. We need to embrace the future. It's going to happen one way or the other. And so you, you just have to be open and curious and excited. You don't have to be a technologist. You don't have to speak in the language of Python and JavaScript. It's helpful but to be aware and familiar with it. But you, you do have to be willing to um, think about the future and attract other people around you and, and think about the challenges that you have in new ways. Um, oftentimes, HR professionals that aren't technologically savvy uh, are concerned about their role in the future and their place in the future. But I can assure you, we, we, we need people who know the subject matter very well. So we call them subject matter experts. We need HR professionals that know their craft well and will partner with technologists to usher it into the future. There is always resistance to change in an organization because every organization has a fundamental tension within it. You have the tension of what has always worked, our core business and protecting that. And then you have the tension of trying to disrupt yourself, to plan forward for the future. And so there's always that inherent tension. So the way we handle that tension within NASA is that we try to model what the future looks like by pilots and prototype projects. We test things out. We make sure that they're tied to the core mission of NASA, to the objectives of what we're trying to set out to do so that we can show our operationally minded uh, partners and colleagues that what we're doing from an innovation standpoint has value and actually improves their lives as well. It makes things more efficient and effective than they were before. Well, the role of HR hasn't necessarily changed. Maybe the methodology and the process with which we do HR has changed. At NASA, HR is fundamentally about caring for um, inspiring, protecting, engaging our core talent, which is one of our most valuable assets. We're just thinking about how to do that differently using technology, but not only technology, just thinking about the ways that work has changed. People are, have different expectations today than they did 30 years ago about work. So how can we as NASA continue to improve and deliver HR services that are catered to our current workforce and the workforce of the future. Again, it, it goes back to, um, do you see technology as something to be scared of or fearful of? Or do you see technology as an opportunity to better do what you do? So NASA, we have a mission that's fundamentally about exploration and discovery and expanding the frontiers of human knowledge. Um, sometimes we do that through robotic emissaries to the most remote parts of our solar system and beyond. Sometimes we do that by taking the big telescopes and turning them back at Earth and looking at our own planet. But ultimately, it's about doing things that have never been done before. So we, we are in the business of being uncomfortable because we have never done a lot of these things before. We're pressed to be innovative. And so that's what my encouragement is, is be comfortable with the ambiguity, be curious, be an explorer. We all are innately that when we're kids, but sometimes as adults, we 
we get comfortable or we get scared. And so just try to find ways to challenge yourself to continue to think beyond your current, your current way of thinking. The biggest challenge for us at NASA, and I would argue probably any large organization that's mature, that's been around for more than five or 10 years, is that we have had a lot of successes in our past, which is fantastic. 60 years of landing on the moon, building space stations, um, exploring Mars. What that has done though, is that it, we have a lot of assumptions and biases about how things are done. And that status quo can be baked into our processes and our procedures and our methodologies today. And so that the culture of NASA and the culture of the organization becomes um, uncomfortable with thinking about new ways of doing business. And so the same successes that have got you to where you are today can also be the biggest challenges you have in moving forward. And I used to work for a guy who said, you can only see as far into the future as you can in the past. You have to honor where you've been, but you have to do that with with a vision of looking forward for the next 60 years. The biggest difference is, is that we now have a workforce that we're no longer just talking about the young kids coming in the workforce. They're now here. We have an entire generation of digital natives born between 1980 and 2000 that make up over 25% of the workforce today. And right behind them is Generation Z or Generation Z that is also digital native, only they're growing up in a world where they're not just behind devices, they're interacting with voice activated uh, technology and technology that's more ambient. It's in their world, it's just part of who they are. They're just as much a digital person as they are a physical person. They work just as much online as they do in an office space. And so pretty soon, more than 50% of our workforce will, will will be growing, have been grown up in, in a digital native environment. It's a fundamental shift from how we've done things before. There's a huge opportunity. Um, this is a generation that can use technology in ways that makes them superheroes. They have capabilities that we never had prior to this. And so we as organizations just have to figure out how to tap into and unleash that talent and creativity to help us better do what we do. I wish I could say that we could approach all generations the same, but you just can't. There, there are huge differences within generations. And I think what, we, what we've learned is that we need to respect all generations, five generations in the workforce really. And we need to build products and services and customer support for all generations. Find out where they have common ground um, and then also understand their differences and then and treat them all as valuable assets to our organization. Yeah, so at NASA, I started the Open Innovation Program, Open Government, as well as our Data Science Program. And through those three things, we recognize that sometimes the best ideas may not come from within your own organization. They may come from somewhere completely on the other side of the world. And so we looked for new opportunities for them to participate in NASA's mission. And so we started two large mass collaborations or hackathons that took place, take place every year in 200 cities around the world. And we essentially augment the NASA workforce for an entire weekend with people, global citizens, who are inspired by space exploration and want to participate. So the International Space Apps Challenge is one example um, as, as a way that, that people can participate in what NASA is doing. We actually put real challenges out there, things that we're working on that matter to us that are core to our business. We put them out there and we just say, hey, does somebody else have a better idea? Does somebody else have a better approach? Does somebody else have a better solution to our work? And we've been overwhelmed with the response. People are amazingly creative and sometimes that diversity of thought is the one thing that we needed most to just break loose a new innovation or a new discovery. I think that the walls that silo HR professionals 
will start to break down. And it's not going to be necessarily a technology thing. It's literally going to be recognizing that the experience of an employee is no longer climbing a career ladder. If you were an HR professional when you came out of college and you started at your job, that doesn't mean you're going to be working in HR 10 years or 20 years down the road. I think HR is going to fundamentally change when we start to open our minds and, our, and allow other people to participate in what we do. I mean, who better than somebody who's been in the core business of an organization to be in HR? They know the business better than anyone, but they also value the people element of it. And so the more cross-discipline, interdisciplinary our HR uh, organizations can be, the better I think it will be in the future. And, I, and I'm a perfect example of that. I'm an engineer. I'm a scientist. I definitely am not an HR professional from my background, but I think, uh, I think that our team is, is, is composed of people like me and we are able to think about things so differently because we don't know what's not possible. We can dream about what tomorrow can look like and create a new HR for our organization.